we, we have no, uh, no. We have, it's not on the agenda tonight, so we won't take action on it. So if, if you want to address something at a later meeting, it's postponed. Postponed. Okay. Are you good to go? Yeah, no. Okay. I thought I still had it. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Today's date is uh, Tuesday, October 8th. It is 731. Uh, welcome to the City of Utica for our regularly scheduled City Council meeting. Uh, can we have everyone stand for the pledge, please? Sergeant Kaluznik, can you lead us, sir? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Ms. Ricketts, please call the roll. Sakura. Here. Terenzi. Here. Cuddington. Here. Sylvester. Calandrino. Here. O'Donnell. Here. Dion. Here. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so one absent, Mr. Sylvester. We have the minutes. Council presented to you from August 13th, September 10th, and September 23rd, 2019. Are there any additions, deletions, or subtractions? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, those three meetings there. Support. Very good. Moved by Socorro, supported by Mr. Calandrino. Any discussion on the matter? I would like to mention there was one correction on the... September 13th, relating to the Greeley fill dirt issue. Okay. It's been corrected, and it's perfect now. Very good. Thank you, sir. So uh, it's been moved. It's been uh, supported. It's been discussed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> so, folks, uh, it is time uh, at the beginning of the meeting where we allow uh, folks within the audience to address council on any item that is listed on the agenda. So if there's anything on the agenda that you are passionate about or would like to address council on before we take action on any such matter, you're certainly welcome to make your way to the podium and be heard at this time. Very good. Moving on. So um, unfinished business, there was none noted. Correspondence, we did receive a Home Depot letter of thank you to the police department. It would require a motion to file and receive that correspondence. I'm sorry, receive and file that correspondence. So move support. It's been moved by Socorro, supported by Mr. Cunnington. Any discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The motion carries. Thank you. Next item, new business. Mr. Fred Miller, it is our Macomb County clerk, is here before us today. Mr. Miller, sir, thank you for joining us. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I appreciate the time. Um, I want you to know that I uh, adhere, strictly adhere to the five B's of public speaking. Be brief, brother. Be brief. <laughs> um, Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm just here with no particular agenda, but just basically to share the good news from the Macomb County Clerk's Office. Um, we have all been reading the, the headlines and news over the past two years and known what that department um, has, has been through. And I'm, I'm so blessed and fortunate to serve in the capacity now, and I'm happy to report that the Clerk's Office, which touches so many of our local communities and departments within county government, uh, is back on solid footing. Um, while I would love to take all the credit for it, uh, we all know uh, anybody who's doing any worthwhile work knows that we don't do anything together. And uh, we all, all of us in Macomb County are really indebted to the 90 people of the Macomb County Clerk's Office who have been through such a tumultuous couple of years, endure things at their workplace that nobody should have to endure, but through it all maintain professionalism and continue to provide excellent public service to the people of Macomb County. And so um, we are not only fixing, uh, repairing, uh, but we're hopefully getting to the point where we will once again be able to be uh, innovative and uh, excellent department that is the envy of the nation as it once was, an award-winning department. But just as a quick review, there are four divisions of the clerk's office. Uh, number one, we're the register of deeds, so anytime you buy or sell a property, a home, or a business, in order to secure your ownership, uh, register your ownership, you can register that deed. Uh, we have uh, documents dating back to the early 1800s. Uh, some of which no doubt are from this uh, historic city and, and the surrounding areas. Um, and that's not only good for uh, title companies and attorneys and whatnot, but also good for, um, for research and genealogy purposes as well. Uh, we are the uh, elections administrator for the, for the county, uh, but really I didn't, um, I'm not embarrassed to admit that I didn't recognize um, that the, really the central part of running uh, day, the election day and the absentee voting um, is the, the local clerks. And so we have a great partnership with all of our city, village, and township clerks, 
active participant in the Macomb County Clerks Association. And um, as you all probably know, both being on the ballot and uh, working with uh, your clerk, um, elections just this year are changing radically thanks to Proposal 3. And what that means um, is really a, a sea change in how clerks administer uh, elections. And hopefully it'll be much more easy for people to access the ballot, especially when we have a high traffic election like we're going to have uh, at least one of next year. So uh, we work with our local clerks on that. Um, we are vital records as well, so birth certificates, marriage licenses, concealed pistol licenses, uh, notary applications, um, and death, death certificates and things like that, as well as uh, we're the, clerk, the clerk of the court for the 16th uh, Circuit Court in Mount Clemens, and we have jury pool. Uh, we run the jury room. I cannot get you out of jury duty. If you want to get out of jury duty, talk to the guy, James Biernat, Jr., <laughs> the chief judge. <laughs> Um, but um, they don't, they don't uh, give excusals, excuses from uh, jury, excuse, um, waiving jury service uh, very lightly. However, we are able to work with people for deferments, and we can push it back if you have a, a pressing professional engagement or health, health issue. Um, and, and also, I, I'm learning this, uh, students uh, can, can defer their jury service uh, with uh, <coughs> class schedule. Something that we learn to do every day. But um, the last thing I want to say, um, uh, one, one of the services I want to direct your attention to this flyer. Uh, we've restarted the program that was started under uh, former clerk Carmela Stabla, but it's to make sure that the ser accessing services of the clerk's office, that your proximity to our offices in downtown Mount Clemens shouldn't be a barrier to getting excellent service. So we're going to, to all areas of the county to try and um, bring services there. And I want to highlight that on Thursday, November 14th, we're going to be at the Shelby Township offices. Uh, that'll be our let's see, that'll be our 14th uh, mobile office that we'll have this year. And really look forward to potentially uh, partnering with you all and conducting a mobile office uh, here in the city at the library or at a place that uh, you guys designate that would be a good uh, a good fit. If that's something you want to partner in, we would certainly be interested in having that conversation. So. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, uh, when I think about Utica, I think about my good friends in the McGrail family, and um, you know, privileged to have known uh, Linda for a long time. I recount the day when we were much younger, um, 20 plus years ago, when we together worked in the city of Utica on the, for our, our club that we here belonged to. We had a charitable bingo that we ran, which is now the church up on Van Dyke. And we would close up about 9 o'clock or so, and I, I don't think it was Linda, but one of us in our group had the idea to try and hit every bar in the city of Utica before closing. Oh, it was Linda. We had fewer bars then, though. <laughs> so with that, Mr. Mayor, again, thanks for the time. Um, and, and if you don't remember anything that what I say is that we're here to be to partner with you, support you, and... And uh, my contact information is on the sheet, and happy to answer any questions, and hope I'll be able to be of service to the city. Today. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Clerk. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Congratulations on a, on restoring the uh, normalcy to the office. Thank you. So uh, that is, uh, again, Fred Miller from the Macomb County Clerk. Thank you so much again, sir. And uh, next we have Mark Nicholson, Mark Nicholson from the Fork and Cork with a report from the event itself. Um, I just wanted to uh, take a minute this evening to provide you a recap of this year's Fork and Cork Festival. Um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Chiefs Cody and Wilsick, as well as Bill Lang and his team at the DPW, um, whose help was invaluable as it was last year uh, also. Um, as you know, this year's event was expanded to three days uh, versus two for the first year, and uh, in spite of the heavy rain that we received uh, Saturday for a short period of time, um, attendance uh, overall for this year's event um, was up over last year. Um, the uh, bit of information that I'm most happy to share with uh, everybody this evening is that this year's event uh, raised um, uh, right around $11,000 for the Humane Society of Macomb. That's so great. Very good. So look at that and say, you know, it was a, it was a good event. Um, moving forward, um, our plan is to uh, come back before council in a couple of months and uh, take the, the best elements of um, the, the event from the first year and the best elements from this year, and uh, you know, uh, propose a, uh, uh, a great event for uh, all of them. That's right. Yeah, it was uh, very well attended. What was the attendance? Over 6,000, I believe? Yeah, very nice. 
and, and I saw many of the restaurants had patrons that filtered into there. And a great idea of closing it up at 10 p.m. also allows people to come out and enjoy themselves for a few and then make their way into our restaurants before they head home. And as well, having them uh, throughout the day. I know as many people inside Steampunk and uh, Muldoon's, Danny J's, etc. So, uh, again, a really great evening. And thanks to, uh, for picking Utica again to host it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Any comments for uh, Mr. Nicholson? All right, Mark, thank you so much for doing it, and th thanks for the report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Department of Reports, it starts with the mayor's report. Um, so members, uh, we did enter into a license agreement with Consumers Energy uh, in the spring where they wrote us a check for, Ms. Ricketts, do you recall what it was? Sure. The original? 31,500 second installment was 16,500. Um, 48,000, which has benefited the Park and Rec Commission. Wow. They just asked to extend it for a three-month period at the sum of 44,500 40, 4, per month, which were taken into December. So this, uh, they, uh, when we entered into that agreement, the, the um, contract allowed for an extension. Should they chose to do it, we were agreeing in, with that extension at the time of executing the contract. Um, today I have before you a uh, check for $16,500. Again, from Consumers Energy, bringing us up a total from them, our partnership with them to Parks and Rec, again, at $48,000 uh, for that lease space where it used to be the packing plant, or the packing, uh, I guess the packing plant. Um, as well, um, we received from the Fork and Cork Festival the parking. Uh, we, we cashed in a total of $1,760 was what was received, and then we paid uh, the parking attendants $431 80 cents, which we netted $1,328.20 from the parking, which is also going to the uh, Parks and Rec Commission. And tonight um, we have before us, let me see, Lynn, are you on the agenda? I am not. Okay. So Lynn Carnes, uh, a resident here, and she is also with the Women's, Lo Women's Life 911. Uh, she's presenting us with some funds today from the... the, the I'm sorry? The community, the community flea market. So can you approach the, uh, Hi, the podium? And Lynn asked that we, uh, she could present us today with the money. Again, these proceeds are going to benefit the Parks and Rec Commission as well. And Lynn, how much, uh, how much good news do you have for us? Well, the day was uh, rainy and uh, cold and dreary, but um, I am actually happy to present $669. Um, not bad for uh, just a few hours ago. So that is going to the Parks and Rec. Perfect. So when you get a chance, we just give it to Ms. Ricketts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank so you, thank you so much for doing that. So 48000 plus 1328 plus $669 all towards the Parks and Rec, and we uh, didn't expend any money to do that. We just entered some good contracts. We had some good people work with us, and uh, the Parks and Rec and the residents of Utica are all benefactors. So thank you so much, Ms. Carnes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, tonight uh, we have before us an appointment today. What's that? Oh, oh the reallocation, too. Oh, it is there. Okay, so uh, on your agenda, council members, is the allocation of consumers' rent payment. We had, um, Ms. Ricketts, refresh my memory. You want me to explain it? Yeah, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I, I believe council's aware that Windows 7 is coming to That's what end. it was. All of our computers have Windows 7. Um, I'll get to mine later. We are requesting to reallocate $2,100 from the Park and Rec Consumers rent payments to the police department to upgrade their computers to Windows 10. It's $300 a computer. I did talk to Jason. He said um, when Dave bought those computers, they were purchased with the intent to last 7, 10, 10 years. He is very confident. Sean was afraid he was going to buy new computers. Jason assured me that um, the computers they bought were, will more than um, work with Windows 10. Sean does not have any money in his budget for that up, up, upgrade because it was not um, a projected expense. So that's why the request is to reallocate $2,100 from the consumer rent payments to upgrade the police department computers to Windows 10. So, Council, any questions for Ms. Ricketts reference this? Any concerns? Very good. It would require a motion to transfer the funds from the Parks and Rec Commission to uh, the Police Department 
Um, it would be a, a line item under their, under their uh, equipment budget, Chief? Yes. Okay. So it would require a motion to uh, transfer funds from the Parks and Rec Commission budget uh, to uh, the Police Department's um, equipment line item if uh, Council was so seated, so fit to do that. So moved. Support. It's moved by Mr. Calandrino, supported by Mr. Sikora. Any discussion on the matter? No. Ms. Regan, we'll a roll call vote, please. Can you tell me how many? I'm sorry? How many computers? Sir, yeah. I, I'm, many sir computers I'm sorry. Are yes, sir. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're, we're in session right now? I'm sorry. Uh, okay. But the answer is seven. <laughs> okay. We, we, we can't have you just out. Uh, where there's moments for discussion uh, at the beginning of the meeting and certainly at the end, okay? Excuse me. Thank you. So it's been moved by, it's moved by Calandrino. It's been supported by Cal, uh, Mr. Sikora. Any discussion on the matter? If not, Ms. Ricketts, will the roll call vote, please? Sikora? Yes. Terenzi? Yes. Cunnington? Yes. Sylvester Calandrino? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Dion? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Chief, uh, that'd be seven computers, and we'll get those upgraded for you just as soon as possible. Very good. Thank you. And I think that's a good use of uh, the funds. It came by way of uh, a gift, if you will, and we're going to pull those funds to our police department so we don't have to buy new computers. Okay, uh, next, a downtown development appointment request. Uh, uh, members, we have a downtown development authority, which hosts 12 members. Currently, we have 11. I'm asking you today to uh, consider the appointment of Alicia Aleph. She is a state farm Agent, she has her office over at 45200 Starrett, Suite 103, and her office falls within the DDA district. She is a dedicated member to the city of Utica. She attends many of the events and sponsors many of the uh, local events as well. And I humbly request your approval to her appointment. So moved. Moved by Mr. O'Donnell. Support. Support by Mr. Sikora. <coughs> Any discussion on the matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, we have the uh, Parks and Rec Commission today. Before us, we have Greg Lada, who's in the audience with us today. Greg is a resident, lives on Squires. He's also one of the managing uh, members at Danny J's restaurant here downtown. So not only does he live in the city, he works and supports the city. Uh, he has asked for the appointment to the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, he brings with him a knowledge of um, the city by being one a resident to a, uh, a working member in the city. And I would respectfully request that you consider his appointment. Uh, Mr. Lada lives at 11657 Squires here in Utica. I'll make a motion to approve his appointment. Support. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Sikor, supported by Mr. O'Donnell. Any discussion on the matter? Very good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. Mr. Lada, I have a certificate for you. Oh, thank you. Super official. <laughs> so what we'll do is uh, we'll make a copy of that for you real quick, and we'll, uh, we'll get you... Take heavy, take this original. So thank you. Well, thanks thank for, you. Thanks for, thank you yeah, volunteering thank you. to help out. Very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Paternoster, would you come grab that for us and make a copy if you don't mind? Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Greg, Phil, Phil Paternoster is going to grab you right there by the doorway, and he's going to make a copy for you. Oh, or he's going to make our copy, and you take the original. All right, Greg. Well, you're certainly welcome to stay if you want. Uh, yeah. Once the... Uh, once the your copies made, or you can you can leave if you like. Whatever makes whatever makes you happy. Thank you. So, uh, council members, um, I've been approached many times in the last two and a half years. Uh, reference medical marijuana facilities, whether Utica's opting in or opting out. As you know, we opted out uh, to have me uh, medical marijuana facilities in the city of Utica. Uh, I'm completely uh, completely inundated with calls, responses, emails from people interested in this. So uh, I want to educate our residents on uh, recreational marijuana and also medical marijuana and facilities. <laughs> there are some neighboring municipalities such as Warren, Harrison Township, uh, down into Ferndale, and Center Pontiac. Line. What's that? Centerline. And Centerline that are currently in going through the process of being able to have medical marijuana facilities. Um, I'm not advocating one way or the other at this point by any means. I'm just, I'd like to include our residents in an open discussion so they can make informed decisions as to whether this is something that they want in their community. So on October 22nd, in the giving room in the library, at 7 p.m., we are going to host a town hall meeting. And it's going to be referenced, uh, the main item is going to be medical marijuana and also recreational marijuana, so people can have some informed uh, information from the experts that are looking to bring this to local municipalities. 
So again, that will be October 22nd. It's a Tuesday, and it will be at the giving room, which is the lower level of the library, at 7 p.m. Okay. So the, again, this, the city's not advocating one way or the other, and I don't have any members of council that have outstandingly said one way or the other, and that, that's not our position or purpose for this meeting, just simply to give information, reference the laws, and the purpose of uh, these facilities. Um, also, October 28th, uh, Senator Pete Lacido is hosting a senior expo at Palazzo Grande. Uh, it's up there at 25 in Van Dyke. That's uh, our state senator, Peter Lacido, at Palazzo Grande. Uh, there, it's in the morning, and there is a, um, a senior expo. All sorts of information for, um, for residents. Let me get the actual time there for you. It should be at 9 a.m. That's 9 a.m. at Palazzo Grande. Okay. So that's going to be uh, it for the mayor's reports. Council uh, reports from council tonight. Mr. Sikora? Um, through time, well, through the history of uh, Utica, when it comes to negotiating all the city contracts with their different unions, um, it's basically been done with our, our city attorney and our mayor. Um, it has always been done very, very extremely well. But times are changing and things get more and more technical. We'll be coming into uh, negotiating with the police department, and I am proposing that we, for this contract, enter in with a another, let's say, a labor attorney, somebody that specializes in this, to assist our city um, attorney in negotiating that contract. Things have become very, very technical. We've done it before with our Comcast negotiations and other things where we bring in outside counsel that specializes in that, um, and I think it's time we do this. They bring people that just specialize in negotiating contracts for them. I think we just need that little bit of assistance for us. This is in no way, no way, shape, or form a slight to our city attorney. So it's just, I think, um, it, it's time that we go in the same way. So. Any discussion on it? Was that the motion? Well, not yet. Not, not yet. Just, just can bring some. But anyone have any? Any council members have any? So, Mr. Adam, I'm sorry. I think it's quite the opposite. I think it's nice for Linda to be able to sort of have a separation between. I, I feel like it'd be awkward if you have to essentially negotiate down <laughs> salaries and stuff like that um, to people who are your colleagues. So I, I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. um, anyway. I would, uh, I would like to, before we enter into a contract, if, if this motion were to pass, I would like to enter into uh, talks t preliminarily to see what the department is asking for so that we could report this back to council. And then at that point, if council says, yeah, this is something that we need to do. But if the demands are simple and they're within the limits of what you feel confident the attorney and myself can handle, great. If it requires more than that, then we would certainly look at the, uh, the hired professional. I, I would um, bear to differ. I, I would think we get on board with what we need so we're not playing catch-up. That is unfortunately what we do a lot here in the city when it comes to our contracts. They go past their due date because we don't start or this meeting doesn't happen or that. Um, I, I, I beg to differ. I think it's important that the other, that the union knows that we're prepared to negotiate this way and um, I, I don't think it's the right way to go and to say we'll enter into it if we think we need it. I think we enter into it and take it from there. Very so, good. I, mean, I, I would agree with you. I think that's part of the value of seeking outside counsel is to have their advice about you know what the offer from the, the opposing uh, union labor attorneys would be. You know, I think we want to have their advice at every step of, of the process. Can I just interject one minor thing? And that Absolutely. I mean, you can accept the demands of the union. They can lay out their initial demands, so you can at least rate then whether the specialist has done a good job by knowing what they started with. You know, would we not? And that doesn't. You don't need to engage, engage in intense negotiations. You just have a meeting. What are your demands? I, I'm Bring not sure we're qualified to even someone. know if, if that initial. The uh, offer is good. I mean, I think that's part of the value of, yeah. uh, of nope. seeking outside counsels. For Nobody their would advice. be accepting it. You'd take their demands and then you'd hire the labor counsel 
So you can say, okay, Labor Council, this is what their demands were and this is what you achieved for us. If you don't get that initial demand, you don't know what that Labor Council has achieved for you. I, I, see, I see your point, but I see Ken's point. But the thing is, are we not wasting time doing it double? You can do it parallel tracks. I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't want to come back next month and say, well, okay, now we're, we're going to vote on it. Well, we, we, still, we still have time on this. This is, Chief, when does our contract expire? Sorry, uh, that would be, uh, July of two, 2020. 2020. Oh. Yeah, we, we have several months. June, yeah. June, we're, not under, we're not under the gun. Or June, yeah, June. Yeah. So. But yeah. I'll, I'll we, bear, bear the difference. We say gun. we're never under the gun, we're and then the we gun. wait to the last minute, and then we're under the gun. We're you haven't gone through contracts gun. yet. So the history of it, um, we're, we're always pushing the boundaries. We're always past, and then it's the, this, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes a cluster, and <coughs> I'm going to still beg to differ. I, I think if you have them on board, um, I... I I, I just think it's the proper way to do it, and it sets the stage, I think, and tells the, the, the unions that we are prepared to do it this way, and we have assistance for our city attorney um, that specializes in labor, you know, uh, contracts, negotiations, and it just it sets the tone early. So not to be adversarial, but it just gets, I think, a lot of it out of the way. If you can make a quick comment. Chief. Um, I would, the only thing I, I would say to that is, um, and I'm sure a city attorney can probably speak to it, that if there's a dollar amount or, uh, or I don't know if your in intent is to look at bids or what this is going to cost the city to move forward in that regard, um, before you take on another attorney, what are you prepared to spend for that additional services? If, as uh, the city attorney says, if there's uh, a point where we're really not fighting over too much, maybe that could be averted. It's my only suggestion. That, that's, that's the reason I feel that you should at least have a dialogue, which we will have dialogue, obviously, say, what do you like, or what do you have? Thank you. And then we bring it to council. And then at this point, I think it's at least the best to at least hear what they say before we go hire it out. I think that's... that's, that's why, would we, why would we... What's the resistance to having a labor attorney look at the offer before it came to council and giving us advice. Why wouldn't we seek advice? What, what, what if it? What if, it's, what if it's? What if there's no change? Right. So what if it's I, such a minuscule change to say, well, we want a two percent increase because that's cost of living. Yeah. And well, you then just, why can't we have the attorney? Then you spend five hundred dollars on an attorney to look o look over your shoulder when they when there was no negotiation needed. And it's not going to be just five hundred bucks. Okay. I, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, if we spend a thousand dollars on the attorney. And I guess save eleven hundred dollars on contracts. I guess it all worked out, but I think that you know I think it was a good point that this is an investment, and I guess we're expecting a return on that investment, right? We're trying to save money on contracts, I guess. Um, so uh, that's the bottom line, right? I would like the advice of a labor attorney to look at the whole foundation of the contract, not just. You know, it increased one percent. It increased two percent. I think there's some structural things, you know, from the bottom up that need to be looked at. And I think only a labor attorney with experience in labor negotiations could could give us that kind of advice. You know, I I don't know what the goal is, but you know, what what is the parameter? If it only goes up two percent, then we say okay. I mean, then we're really not addressing other issues that we may not even be aware exist, you know, legacy cost issues, uh, things of that nature. I think that's why we would want to rely on the expertise of an outside counsel to look at the whole picture, not just what's the difference between the past contract and the new contract, the, you know, the proposed new contract. As I've said before in front of counsel many times, I don't think our existing contract is a good contract for the taxpayers of Utica as it is. So why wouldn't we want everything to be looked at? Holistically. Okay. All right, Council. Mr. Sikor, do you have a oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to say one more thing. I think it's worth the time and effort to talk to them first, see what, they, see what they charge, see what they think for the size of our city. Then we know if we should move forward on it. But I think uh, you definitely have to have everything on board one way or the other. Okay. I have something I'd like to say, too. Um, this is... No way against you, Ms. <laughs> Linda. However, I feel it's good to have an, um, an objective person who's not involved with the city, who's not here, who's not in the same type of job, you know, because, Mayor, it might be hard for you because 
you're part of that. So it's hard for you to be objective, and it's just good to have a different view come in that knows nobody, that knows nothing about our city, and take a look and go, okay, you know, yay or nay. I, I, I just think it's worth doing. I really do. I can, see, I can certainly see your point, and I value that. I just think that we're going to end up spending a lot of money on this. And if, that, that's all I'm costing. I think this person will be very expensive, and I don't know if we're going to get the, if the juice is worth the squeeze. But this is this is a seven person today. It's a six person panel, and we're certainly welcome to make that decision. Uh, anyone else, Mr. Stickard, do you would you like to make the motion? I'm going to make a motion to retain, retain outside labor council to assist the city in contracts and related matters. Support. Yeah. Okay. Real quick. Well, we it's been moved by Sir Cor, it's been supported by Mr. Calandrino. Discussion wise, uh, what would be the matter which we obtain this person uh, through bid process? Through interview. Bid, get numbers, qualifications. Okay. Um, how how do they come recommended? Who do they do? Who do they represent now? Just like we've done before, but we can't really do any of that till we to do this. Sure. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. And selection process to, to for this person, we'll need uh, members of council. Well, I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. Sure. Okay. Cool. Pretty good. Okay. It's been moved. It's been supported. Any further discussion on the matter? Then we'll have we'll have the roll call vote, Miss uh, Miss Ricketts. Sakura. Yes. Terenzi. Yes. Cuttington. Yes. Sylvester Calandrino. Yes. O'Donnell. Yes. Dion. No. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any further council reports? I have a couple items. Um, the money that we talked about for the wayfinding signs has come in, okay. uh, and we had initially talked about allocating that towards purchasing or upgrading yeah. some of the residential street signs. Yeah, I uh, upgrading some of the residential street signs to the new branding that we got missed on the first pass. Uh, I called Huron Sign, and their original quote for. Uh, a whole set, you know, a residential street corner sign, the two street uh, signs and the post and all the attaching hardware was $530. Uh, they agreed to reduce it to 500 so we could get an even three signs. Uh, I called them back and said, can you also give us a discount and not charge us shipping? <laughs> because that would add to the cost, and they said they would do that. Uh, they also sent me this morning a drawing, but it doesn't have the actual street names on it or anything, but it it matches what our current uh, residential signs are. Uh, based on feedback from the residents, the three intersections I would propose that we handle this year would be Hecker Drive and Nancy Avenue, Hecker Drive and Russell Street, and Custer Avenue and Summers Street. And I guess uh, we've already talked about it before. I don't know if I need a motion or just an okay to go ahead and order it, uh, how to proceed on that. Well, th these funds have been allocated to that purpose, right? right? And so we've already dedicated. I would think that we don't need a motion to do this. It's already, uh, That's it's good. been approved. Ms. You, he, Gus, you can't order anything. It has to go through a city employee. So you would have to have Bill Lang or his department would be the ones that would order them with the PO. Okay, so I'll, I'll handle that for you. Okay, I'll, I'll you give you a yeah, I'll, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Okay, very good. Uh, are we done with that item then? Yes, sir. Item two, uh, had some communications from a resident in Stonefield Village Condos. There were actually a couple residents. They were complaining about the grass not being cut. They were very happy that the building inspector was able to convince the uh, property owner to handle the grass. But we did have a couple other concerns from that resident. Uh, she would be very happy if we would add sidewalk. Currently, the sidewalk ends on North Point Boulevard right when the uh, at the end of the Montessori school then the, the sidewalk just literally ends and there's a lot of senior citizens that walk their dogs and take walks on that and they would be very grateful if we could somehow get sidewalks put on that little strip that's you know not much I don't know what that entails but I'm just forwarding the information um, she also had concerns about the speeding on North Point uh, she said that Utica police have uh, had a presence there and have issued tickets. Uh, she's requesting that 
perhaps we, you know, continue to do that. She's happy that she's, the police presence has been there in the past, though. Um, and then one last item, water billing. I had some concerns from residents in the last billing cycle that uh, when they received their bill, they only had one day to uh, mail it and that it listed a late fee. If they didn't get it mailed or sent to the city in one day and they didn't have time to even do that, uh, it was my understanding that we had waived late fees at least for the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I believe that is correct. We also have been addressing that internally, or I should say administratively, as the concerns are coming in and people are calling us. We're letting them know that they are in the middle of the changeover from the right. one month to, from the three months to the one month billing. So there's been a grace period allowed for that, and we've been fielding those calls. Okay. Um, I got my water bill two days ago. I had ample time to pay it. It's not due till Halloween, the 31st of October. But it does list that there's a late fee if I pay it after Halloween still. So, you know, there's probably going to be some confusion with the residents. If we have waived the late fee, I'm not sure why it's appearing on the bills right now. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ricketts, are you familiar? That's our standard bill. We didn't really change it. So yeah. uh, anybody but, that's called, they, they were told that they would not be charged a late fee, but... Um, what happens if they are late and they include the late fee? Are we refunding that? No, credit. it would just close a credit on their account. Okay. So, all right, Mr. Calendry, any, anything else, sir? No, that would do it. All right. Any other members of council have anything to report? Very good. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Um, the Planning Commission, there was nothing today to report. Assessor, nothing to report. Mr. Hicks had nothing to report. However, Mr. Hicks is out there in the public, and he is continuing to do a great job for us with the blight and code enforcement. Uh, Ms. Daigie had nothing to report tonight. She's been excused. The fire chief was not present tonight. I was unaware he was not going to be here today. Is, uh, is he on a, I'm sorry, is he on funeral leave? Yes. He is on funeral leave. So, unfortunately, I believe it was his brother-in-law, if I, if I remember correctly. So I stand corrected. I apologize. Um, and then uh, the police chief, Sean Cody, has some uh, items on there. Go ahead, chief. Mayor and Council, as, as you're probably aware, I'm going to try to be short-winded. i got a number of uh, issues here to address with you. Um, everybody knows I'm a kind of use-it-or-lose-it type of individual, and uh, in the past I've come before you for the sale of fixed assets. I'm here again today to request that Mayor and Council authorize the sale of fixed assets. assets. The request uh, is that the proceeds received from these uh, uh, fixed assets get receded into a revenue account that uh, ultimately gets reallocated to the police department's assigned fund balance for future equipment. To give you some background, as a result of the replacement of a 13-year-old L3 camera system that we had in our vehicles, we have five of these 13-year-old systems. That includes cameras, DVRs, microphones, and wiring as part of our current inventory. Further, uh, 11 years ago, the city acquired uh, an instrument called a total station. A total station is a digital surveying equipment that is used for crash measurements. And uh, we brought this into our, our system. We used it anytime we had serious or fatal accidents. The system is currently outdated. It's unable to be adequately put into police use without additional upgrading and computers and software. Further, I'd have to send people to a training. I have uh, spoken to the Michigan State Police. They have a crash team, and they have offered their services. They cover this area of the state. Um, they're not far away, and in the event that we should need accident reconstruction performed, they would be available at a moment's notice to come out, and they would do all measurements uh, for us, and they have the latest equipment and a team that is already trained with that equipment. Um, this service comes to us at no cost. It's through the Michigan State Police, um, and it's, it's the best alternative to uh, uh, other, otherwise investing money, time, and resources into personnel and equipment to continue uh, to have some type of measuring device for uh, fatal accidents. Thirdly, during a uh, recent vehicle upgrade, we have three 11-year-old custom Eagle II radar units that have been replaced with newer systems. These units still contain some value within the law enforcement community. Um, in the past, what I've done is I've either put these on a, a bid site or uh, uh, utilized them in trade for other more modern equipment for the vehicles. And it's my recommendation that the mayor and council approve this request as it stands to be the uh, uh, best, most cost-effective method to dispense with equipment that is no longer in use. 
Uh, it proves to be the best use of our resources for replacing needed items within the police department. Uh, it also allows us to take these, uh, uh, these items that were previously budgeted for, previously used in the police department, and uh, use them for the purchase of new needed equipment for the, uh, for the department. Uh, I would take each one of these and either use a bid site or trade system to acquire new equipment, and uh, um, there may be value that would go out in a bid site so that it could be bid on by the public or other agencies that wish to uh, try to use this uh, or keep it in use for some reason. Any questions about some of the items that we have that are ready to be uh, moved on that are no longer in use for the police department? No, sir. Any questions by council? All right, Chief. Um, it would require a motion to allow the Chief to uh, dispose of these um, by way of sale. Any questions? I will make a motion to allow the chief to do what he just said. Support. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Scor. It's been supported by Mr. Covington, I believe. Any discussion on the matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The motion carries. Council, thank you. Our second item up today is uh, SYO. We just spoke to them uh, briefly about the upgrades to our computers. We have seven computers in the station. Um, our Windows 7 is no longer going to be supported. Those of you who are uh, uh, using Windows at work obviously have been notified by uh, Microsoft that that was a, an important upgrade that's going to be needed moving into the new year. Um, we also, in working with SYO, are moving into a new contract. We are coming off of a three-year contract that we've had with them, and they have submitted a new 39-month contract with the police department. Myself and the city attorney uh, have had an opportunity to review this contract. We've made some slight changes in it just for wording and so forth to benefit our city. Um, we know that the SYO is a, uh, a trusted vendor of the city. They work in the administrative offices as well in the police department. We've had them in and out of our whole facility helping us uh, get our new camera system for the cars up and running and uh, coordinating that into our server. And uh, what we're asking uh, mayor and council is to go ahead and approve their current contract. The current contract uh, does not list any additional um, cost increases. That's left up to the, uh, the mayor and council to make a determination if there are increases in uh, any type of services. You get an opportunity to review any increases and make a vote as to whether to continue services with them. So at this point, there are, there are no increases. Uh, this, this current one, um, would be taking us to August 30th of 2022. Is the current monthly retainer fee 485 as well then? 485 is for the network only. We also have some other ancillary costs that we put into it. There's some connectivity, there's storage and so forth that we also do with them. And that, that's part of that and it's included in that, in that budgetary, uh, the total budgetary amount that we have budgeted. So is that an increase from the the contract no. that's expiring? No, okay. that is not an increase. Chief, have you seen any use for an extended uh, benefits of the contract that you had to have that you didn't have? There, there's nothing really that's changed a whole lot. Um, the biggest thing is just being able to have their, their network uh, professionalism to come in. Um, give you an example, we just had the, the new uh, camera systems put in the cars. Those all go through our network. We need, we need and utilize them because they are our network provider, and they make sure that everything is transferred securely and something that mates with our vehicles so that we can transfer information back and forth. So... As far as needing anything new, there's nothing that's changed that has really required us to uh, increase anything, and, um, but they, they've been used for everything that we do. Yeah, they do a great job for the city. Very comfortable uh, with their services. Lo locally owned and operated, Utica resident is the, uh, the owner of the company. I grew up in the area as well. So, okay, uh, it would require a motion to approve the uh, contractual renewal uh, with SYL computers. So moved. Moved by Mr. Sikora. Support. Supported by Mr. O'Donnell. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The motion carries. Thank you, Chief. i do a grant application request. Yep. I just want to modify that a little bit. Um, it's more of a grant update. Um, I've been in communications with uh, Kerry Thompson. Kerry Thompson was brought to our city and is doing some works with Park, Parks and Rec. DDA. Um, yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> DDA. And... Uh, in, in speaking with him, he seems very energetic to assist us in any other needs that we have. So I've kind of expressed some interest in some of the following grants, and I just want to keep you updated as to what our conversation entailed and kind of tell you what we're looking at moving forward. 
Our first one is a camera grant that will include updating municipal building interior, exterior, uh, and in custody areas that we have within the police department. It would further include uh, some of the public areas of the city. When I speak to the grant writer, he says, when you're looking at grants, pretend like you're a kid at Disney World, okay? <laughs> Ask for the world because you want to see as much as you can get. Um, I, I did a staff study on, on, on cameras for our city, and I want to see them in public areas. The mayor and I have talked about this extensively for both Grant Park, Memorial Park, our tunnel areas and things like that, um, but it would also be a great update. So uh, for the security here, we have uh, cameras that monitor the area we're currently in, as well as the administrative areas of City Hall. And so what I'm doing is speaking to him, and we're moving in a direction to try and get some grant monies to help us update that. So I just wanted to give you an update on what we're doing there. We're still gathering information, putting things together to try to make ourselves uh, compliant for that grant. So uh, I will keep you updated as to the progress of that. Uh, second one that I'm looking at right now um, is one that includes update for our 911 equipment. Um, it's, it's been a little bit of time now, but Councilman uh, Sylvester came to us about uh, a capital improvement plan. And in putting some of these things together and putting some notes to, uh, to paper, I've kind of kept an eye to some of the grants as they come forward. There's a grant that's currently available to update uh, equipment that is utilized for any 911 answering points. And it, it seems to be a bit of a broad uh, a spectrum type of grant. In other words, it looks like it's going to be able to include anything from cabinetry, computers, anything at all. Um, it, there was a, a thing that I had brought up, and when we were dealing with some of the uh, capital improvements, our 911 system is a little bit aged. So, uh, in speaking to people when we had it last looked at, we were told that uh, an update could cost as much as $100,000. This grant is um, uh, a system that comes with a 10% match. So in speaking to our, uh, our grant writer, he says to at least kind of earmark counsel for about a $200,000. And again, we're still in the stages right now where we're still gathering information. That's why I bring it to your ear at this point. I want you to at least uh, have an idea of what we're looking for, what we're trying to accomplish, and that would ultimately give us a uh, commitment of $20,000 should we be uh, granted uh, application for that grant. So um, I want to continue to move forward with the grant writer and uh, getting some information on our behalf for that. And uh, if I'm going to put some resources into that, I want to I want to know if council has any questions, if they feel that that's a worthwhile uh, effort to uh, dedicate our uh, our resources to. Uh oh, Jeeva, are we facing any uh, uh, 911 compliance? issues or this is just more of a proactive attempt to it, it's just that yeah. based on the uh, the meeting that we had uh, some time ago that was one of the primary items that we had on the list for a um, uh, a capital improvement and because of its cost um, this looks like a good opportunity to get us in a, uh, into a situation where we can save an, an enormous amount of money um, there are more monies available but I hesitate coming to you asking for the 20000 um, I but if, if, if we uh, get to a point where this is submitted, I guess I just want to make sure that everybody is comfortable with that, and if they have any questions at this time, um, I, th I think it's a good opportunity for us. If we can at least uh, get our name in the hat for something like this, it would make a big difference in how we dispatch 911. Uh, a lot of technological changes have come about for hearing impaired, uh, texting 911s and so forth. Um, some of those things we don't have with us. We rely on other uh, technologies to help us through that. Um, and this would kind of get us in more of a state-of-the-art situation. I guess my opinion would be if match dollars are involved, that we hit the, the items that are high priority, like, you know, like where we might have compliance issues or, you know, Fail, expected failures coming down the road very soon. You know, I don't know, you've probably analyzed that. You know, if our 911 system is adequate for five years, then maybe we should look at things that are, you know. The, the current system that we have is over 10 years old. When they came out to evaluate our system, they said that um, there are no more replacements. They said the system then this that we, would qualify, I would say. Yep, and, and he said that uh, um, the system we have is a stout system. It's it's very uh, it has a great longevity track, um, so we have not had any problems with it. Our our biggest issue is if if, if there is a problem, 
we're going to need to upgrade. So right. um, the, the discussions that we had earlier kind of kept it on my uh, radar. So as I'm perusing through some of this and I come across this, um, my experience with grants is uh, not as good as our grant writer, obviously. So in talking to him, he seems like we would be in a good position to be uh, eligible for such a thing. And Chief, you, so you already spoke to, we already are due to technological changes, doing workarounds to make this functional? Yes. Okay. And yep. do you have any sense of, of uh, with the workarounds, uh, to, to what degree that might degrade our response time or effectiveness for the system? Um, it, it, when, when you look at it, sometimes we have to make phone calls to cell phone carriers, things like that, to try to help track, uh, locate services. Some of these would be more automated through the, the new new 911 systems. Uh, same type of thing if somebody is texting, they're in a situation where they can't uh, uh, use voice text. Uh, they're concealing their uh, their situation within a home or something like that, and they're trying to communicate with police. This would, this would definitely upgrade those systems. Okay. I, just going back. This is a 10% match, which, again, it's 10 to 1. Great ratio of getting funds, okay? Um, if you have a mar marginal grant that you're writing to and it's a 1 to 1, you don't get the bang for the buck. So, but free money is good money if we have it. So, um, I would say always do exactly, you know, inform council on what's out there. And uh, this one I would highly recommend going to. Okay. So. If, if, thank you for that update. And now you have another one for the training funding request? I do. And this, this, one, um, this one comes to us out of uh, our, our uh, analyzing some of our training funds. This, this past year we budgeted $1,000 to come out of our ACT 302 training funds. The 302 training funds are funds that the, uh, uh, the, the state... Um, is, is almost like a profit sharing that they give the municipalities to allow us to train police officers. And what they've done in the past is they've been very stringent on how those monies can be spent. In other words, if there was a, a training class or program that was put out, you would always look to see if it qualified for the 302 funding and you could use this money for it. Now they've opened that up and it includes items such as Anything that can be dedicated to a training mechanism. In other words, if I need training ammunition, if I need a training facility, if I need uh, training instructors, if uh, I need taser cartridges or instructors, it will pay for some of that. Um, over some time, we have accumulated some monies in this account. The Act 302 is uh, um, something that they were very, very reluctant to give out, but they also want you to spend it before you get more. So... Since they limited your access to them, we had very little that we could spend it on. Now that they have a more broad element of how you can utilize and spend that money, um, obviously that's, that's an enormous amount of training and so forth that we can afford to give the department if we utilize it. And we have that money. Currently, we have about $17,906 in that account. I only budgeted 1000 because there was very little that we could utilize it with. Um, I would ask for the access of that money uh, to be put into our fund now that we're able to spend it on other things. And to just kind of be a little bit more formal, I'll go through some of the information. This fund balance is a result of uh, revenue sharing from the state. It's not part of general funds money. In other words, this comes directly from the state. These funds are distributed on, uh, from the state on a biannual purpose uh, for the purpose of funding law enforcement training. It has accumulated over a number of years and recent changes have expanded the allowable uses. The state, in an effort to stop departments from stockpiling this money uh, uh, for training funds, are now requiring that the funds uh, taken in are expelled prior to receiving monies. I've applied for this the past couple of years, and they haven't given us any because we haven't been able to spend it. Um, the use of these funds will allow the city uh, uh, to follow some of the city purchasing practices along with the state mandates for its uses. In other words, if I uh, have access to this or move this into an account balance for uh, the utilization of training, it would follow along the same purchase practices that we currently utilize. If I was looking at some expenditure, there are, there are some that would come before council and there are some that would go before the mayor and there are some that would go under my purview so that uh, um, we could continue training, uh, such as tra taser cartridges. They're $35 a piece. Each officer is supposed to utilize two of those in a training capacity uh, each year. So uh, you start to buy just training cartridges, you're looking at almost $1,000 right there for training. 
um, that would give me the option to go ahead and buy something like that or purchase things at a, at a reduced price when I find a bargain on them and uh, accumulate them so that we have those items for training. We have to log each one of these expenditures and we do so on their online site. And uh, we've already utilized some of the $1,000 that we had for training ammo and so forth. So they know exactly what we're spending it on, where it's going, so they know that when we apply for it the following year, we can dedicate its use. Um, it's my recommendation that the mayor and council approve this request as it stands. This use of the Act 302 monies will reduce the expenditure of the budgeted training money. We already budgeted money for training. This could, uh, instead of taking money out of the monies that we have in our current budget to buy some of these items, we now are taking it out of state funds because they've expanded its use. So it would allow us to hopefully have surplus in that, in that line item by the end of the year. Um, this benefits the city fiscally as well as creates the ability to fund some core trainings and do some professional development with some of our officers. Is there any questions as to what we're requesting? I believe so. I think that's very thorough. <laughs> so, Council, it would require a motion to allow the Chief to access those funds. I move that we allow Police Chief to access the Act 302 training funds uh, for training. Support. Okay, any further discussion on the matter? It's been moved by Mr. Calandrino. It's been supported by Mr. Sylvester. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. The motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Anything further, sir? I do. Mayor and uh, Council, um, we were anticipating your support of this. And okay. As a result hang of that, on, as I... Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not sufficient motion to support the budget amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. It, it, it requires a budget amendment. Okay. Very good. So we need a motion to that effect, please. Okay. So we do, have support, we do have support for the... Um, for the training fund request, uh, let, we would require another motion to amend the budget. So moved. Support. I heard Mr. Calandrino first. We'll say. So it's been moved by Mr. Sikora. It's been supported by Mr. Calandrino. Any further discussion on the matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. And then you were going to follow up with? Yes. Um, we, we were uh, anticipating uh, support of that to help develop... Um, our, our officers and give them opportunities for training. Tonight with me is Sergeant uh, Matthew Kaluzny. Um, he has a training that is uh, part of a training that most departments send people to upon uh, their new position to sergeant. And I'm gonna let him kind of take the microphone for a moment and express to you uh, the training that he's looking to move forward with and give you an opportunity to see what some of this training monies can do for the city. Podium or you wanna, okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'd like to present with you my proposal to attend the Northwestern School Staff and Command. It's, uh, the school is, is done locally here at Troy Police Department. The uh, Northwestern University School Police uh, Staff and Command is a nationally recognized 10-week school that provides police supervisor, supervisors with the tools needed to lead in today's environment. The school has been in existence since 1983 and is recognized worldwide as an industry standard in developing supervisors for leadership roles. One of the things, um, I'm a prior military veteran, and one of the things that they did when I was promoted to sergeant in the military was that they send you to a four-week uh, supervisor's school. So you're able to learn from uh, the, the industry specific things that, that you need to be a sergeant in the military. This school falls along the same lines for law enforcement. This is the premier school when you're looking at law enforcement schools to send supervisors to. Um, I am requesting to attend this school. The school staff and command is considered, like I said, one of the nation's top law enforcement schools. As a police officer and sergeant here with the city of uh, Utica, I've been with the department now for 14 years. I have another minimum 10 years left in my tenure here at the city, of which I, I feel that I'll be able to utilize this school to its fullest benefit here to serve the citizens, the city, and also manage the officers of here at the park. Uh, this request is able to utilize the Act 302 funds that the Chief just talked about that we're able to get from the state. So there's going to be zero cost to the citizens or to the city budget or the police budget. All this money is going to come directly from the state revenue sharing funds. Um, I would like to appreciate your, would like to thank you for your time and consideration in my proposal to attend this class. Thank you, Sergeant Kluzny. 
Chief, the funds that uh, we're going to use from 302 funds, are they able to pay overtime if there is a, sh a shortage they are. in the shift? Yes. Okay. It'll, it'll, it'll allow for backfill for any vacancies in a position. Perfect. Um, the times that this takes place, and this, this is actually uh, comes at a good time, um, this class starts in, in, in short order, so it's during a time of year where people are not on vacation. Our staffing levels are usually pretty easily managed and so forth. Um, and in any situation where they are not, um, obviously these can make up the difference for overtime. So it's a good opportunity. Um, there are many departments that once you are um, have passed a portion of your supervisory exam and testing phase, they make you sign a document telling them that you will attend this. In other words, they mandate it to the point that they want you to know that it is a dedicated school, it's important, and it takes up a lot of your time. So it is a very recognized school, and uh, it would be my suggestion that it be uh, uh, forwarded for an opportunity for the sergeant to attend. And how long is the school? You may have said it, but I might have missed it. It's a, it's yep. a ten week school. Ten weeks. Mm -hmm. And what, what what are the days of attendance? What, what they do is they, they do a two week on, two week off program. So it actually runs from January to May. So you attend two weeks, forty hours in classroom in Troy Police, and then you're back to your department for two weeks. So they elongate. Right. And the good thing is it's paid for by three hundred two funds. The shortage that we might have in manpower is covered by three hundred two funds. <clears throat> and the net benefit would be we get an officer that's more assertively trained at the zero cost of the city, is what I'm, if I'm understanding it yep. correctly. And for the next 10 years, since he okay. intends to remain with us throughout the tenure of his career. Good. All right, Council, it would require a motion to approve the request per the, uh, the sergeant's request. I'll make a motion to approve. Support. So it's been moved by Mr. Secor, it's been supported by Mr. O'Donnell. Any discussion on the matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. Sergeant Nicoluzzi, thank you for continuing your education and dedication. That's a, I mean, school's not fun sometimes, <laughs> but this is just something we're going to get a better product out of, uh, out of Sergeant Nicoluzzi with this education. So thank you so much. Yep. Thank you very much. Mayor Chief. Council, thank you. Okay, very good. Thanks, Chief. Next up is uh, the DPW, Superintendent Bill Lang, with a request for a municipal uh, separate storm and sewer system ordinance. Yes, Mayor and Council, um, this month you should have in your packet a copy of the separate storm water uh, ordinance in which um, I'm asking for the city to adopt. Uh, as I mentioned last month, the city attorney looked it over and it, basically it's a, well it is, it's a boilerplate ordinance that um, Eagle and um, the uh, EPA is uh, requiring us to adopt um, in order to be in compliance with our MS4 permit, our separate storm water discharge permit. Um, so uh, if there's any questions on the ordinance, basically what the ordinance does is it gives us, uh, the city, the ability for um, stricter enforcement of any potential um, wrongdoings or inappropriate uh, <coughs> stormwater management practices here in the city. Is this going to cost the city anything? Does no. it change our processes no. in the real world at all? It no. seemed pretty it just, it just no. gives standard. some authority to take action, right. well, if necessary. For, first, let me, for Mr. Caladrino, our, our stormwater management program, our MS4 permit, that entire program is an unfunded mandate. So yeah. it's all generate costs up to the city. Um, this, but does this increase this particularly? Yes, it does because it further complicates another layer of government, another layer of uh, bureaucracy, uh, in order to to uh, achieve what the EPA and the, and Eagle has mandated, but not put any funds into. So that, I mean, respectfully, yes, it does. Um, minuscule amount, but it's more paper. More that was paper my next work. question. How much? Yeah, minuscule amount. Um, it's just another layer in the process. Um, however, it does give us the ability that in the event that um, things aren't being properly maintained in the private sector, that we have enforcement abilities that could, can include fines and total shutdowns of facilities and things like that. So, um, you know, it's Managing our MS4 permit and, and everything that goes along with it, you know, it, it's actually a fairly reasonable cost as far as a high number with, with the amount of time and effort that we have to put into it for no money. Um, but to give you an idea of what it would take to manage that, you would have to uh, basically 
turn our storm system into a utility. So it'd be another tax, if you would, to the to the community. That's the only way to really manage that okay. would be to, which we've we've looked at. But and, and Mr. Uh, Lang's used the term Eagle a couple of times. If you're not familiar, that's the Michigan DEQ. Or not yeah, Michigan. it's uh, well. So Eagle, Environmental, Great Lakes, and Energy. Yeah. So when. Um, Formerly known as the DEQ. Yeah, when Governor uh, Whitmer took over, she re one of the privileges she has is being able to rename uh, departments, and that was one she called changed to Eagle. That was uh, when she took office. Um, so, that, I mean, that being said, it, uh, again, it's we really don't have a choice. It's um, part of what the DEQ is requiring for our new permit that that we're currently writing and I'm hoping to get um, might be sometime yet. <laughs> before spring, before we get the new updated permit for discharging waters, our managed waters, <coughs> waters of the state. So. All right, thank you, Mr. Link. So, Council, it would uh, require a motion to um, adopt that new ordinance for the municipal separate storm and sewer system. So moved. Support. It's moved by Mr. Secor, supported by Mr. Calandrino. Any discussion on the matter? Ms. Ricketts, we'll have the roll call vote, please. Quorum. Yes. Frenzy? Yes. Huntington? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Calandrino? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Ian? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Lang, anything further? Yeah, I have one. Um, actually, just to add a comment to uh, Councilman Calandrino and maybe the rest of the council, have we not adopted the ordinance in, in reference to does it cost the city? Um, it probably would cost us more by not because right. then we have to justify why we didn't and what we're going to put in place instead of that. So if it makes us feel any better, you know, by doing it, it saves you money in the long run. Um, in, in regards to uh, uh, moving forward, I have, uh, f by the state, um, in the Michigan Municipal League, the state has, and this isn't something I'm adding to the agenda tonight, it's, it's information that I want to get in your hands, so because it's a pretty lengthy document um, for next month's agenda. Uh, it's a pavement warranty program, um, so there, we're, I'm going to ask for uh, two resolutions. One is to, um, oh, there's, there's two things here that we have to do. Um, we have to adopt the, the warranty program, and then the second resolution is to implement the warranty program. And basically what it is, is it's the ability for the city when we do road pavement projects, uh, specifically on this one, uh, for reporting purposes, it's in excess of $2 million, anything related to road, uh, like a big road job. Um, I suspect you can, the guidelines allow for smaller projects as well. Um, but kind of in a nutshell, what it is, is it's a boilerplate warranty that's, that every community throughout the state of Michigan is being asked to adopt. And then it puts us all on a level playing field so that when the contractors come, to bid our projects, they already know what to expect across the state for a warranty, if we so choose to implement one. You don't necessarily have to. You can, there's guidelines and whatnot that we can, and it's all in here. You can, you can either add the warranty or discount the warranty if it's a smaller project, things like that. So I'd like to, I'm gonna have Ms. Ricketts email it to you. If, is that acceptable? We can give them information ahead of time. Because uh, it is pretty lengthy, and you'll be prepared next month for questions, comments. Actually, if you have questions or comments, get with me ahead of time before the meeting, and we can save time in getting it done. I don't believe that for our road funding uh, dollars that we cannot adopt this. Yeah. We we're Pretty much we have to adopt this in order to be in compliance and uh, with the state and uh, receive our Act 51 monies. So, because we already did this because of the road funding thing, we obviously didn't. But I mean, um, I don't think we ever adopted it. This is new. This is relatively new. Okay. okay. So, right, I mean, we do have warranties on the projects that we sure, put sure. together. Yeah. No, but this is a new one that the state sure. uh, okay. came up with, and it's across the board, all 500 and some odd communities, I think it is. Um, so you'll find that somewhere coming soon. Um, other than that, you know, we're finishing up some projects, gearing up towards, unfortunately, the fall season and coming into the other holiday seasons that 
are a little bit out. And um, trying to get some work done on Pioneer Park as well. That's moving along pretty well. Is it going to be finished this year? Pardon? Is it going to be finished this year? It, it It's on track to get finished. It, it's all a matter of uh, the weather and setbacks with grading and things like that. But the um, the actual dog park area where the dog run is is, is uh, like a finished rough grade, if you would. The block is all up. The foundation and block work is all up for the um, for the restroom facility, and I think the carpenters <coughs> are coming later this week. Um, the first co the first course of asphalt is all in on the parking area and the driveway down. Um, like I said, the short of electricity, you, the utilities are in, the water and sewers in, and uh, all the dirt that was out there has been all moved and mass graded. Um, yeah, they're doing a great job out sidewalks there. Sidewalks so are in. You can now, you can now take the sidewalk from Han yeah. all the way down and go connect to the. Oh, and everybody belt, knows. Trauma. Everybody knows. Yeah, even great. though it's a construction site. It, Eva, but, one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was at least three, four months ago we decided to uh, sell the old equipment, and I see it's still there. What happened? Yeah. I've been uh, having trouble getting in touch with the uh, I mean, with uh, the company that's moving it for us. Is that the same so. company that you uses? Yep. And his gets right away, and yours don't. I I, understand. I don't know. I've been playing phone tag with that company for quite a while, and and to be honest with you, with everything between the Summers project, the Van Dyke Road project, and the uh, park project, it's it hasn't been on the forefront of my. I'm just worried that the stuff's going to sit there and rust away and we'll get nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Cunningham, next time you have a concern, just please bring it to me and I'll make sure that we get this taken care of. I hadn't been to the DPW yard in a couple of weeks, so I apologize. We've got three I'm, trucks over there that got to get moved okay. and get and out just, of there. They're just as a, a thank, thank you for having your department, especially Mike, put his dad sign it. Yes, yeah, and that great. too. That was, uh, thank, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. That's, a, that's a nice addition to the uh, uh, nice addition and a, and a um, I knew Joe personally not as well as you did however I mean I, I've known him uh, most of the 25 years I was I joined the fire department with him so I've known Joe and good uh, wonderful wonderful man um, proud to have known him uh, and uh, it's a nice I don't, I'm, I'm at a loss for the word, but homage it's a tribute. Or, tribute, there it is, uh, to, to his hard work, dedication, and commitment, loyalty, all that good stuff. Um, so I, so even I after, I mean, even, and I know I'm a little long winded on this one, but, um, it, it, you know, I've been at Department Head for 16 years. Most of my time there, and any time that I ever had a question about anything, Joe was right in the forefront to help and offer. And share a, sometimes a good joke, sometimes not such a good. <laughs> For those of you that knew him, yes. so it was, you know what I'm talking. Yeah, about. I know what you're saying. It's very anyway. fortunate that, that Mike uh, Francis was able to do the install. Uh, Mike Francis so. was was ordered to do this <laughs> with, a, it was, with a teaspoon. Yeah, yeah, and it was very fortunate also that yeah. uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sikora, uh, paid for the uh, the sign very generous and thank you so much for doing that it's, uh, I'm sure it's very appreciated obviously uh, by our council in the city but also I'm sure by the, uh, Joe's family sure uh, well, they are very again, touched I, I knew the man for 44 years he's my best friend and it's it's the least I could do yeah for mm -hmm. so for those of you that are listening that maybe aren't keeping yeah. up with where we're at there's a new sign in front of the DPW uh, a tribute to Joseph F Joseph E. e. J Joseph E. That's it. Joseph Francis E. Francis. Yeah. Uh, DPW. Dude, what is it? Joseph E. Francis Municipal Complex. Complex. Or junior. Joseph E. Francis Junior. Junior. Muni Department of Public Works. Municipal. No. Dep Dep Department of Public Works Complex. Public, Public Works. Works Public Works Complex. Works Complex. That's the one. All right. Well, we should drive by and take a look. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yes. There's a new sign in front of the DPW in tribute to Joe Francis, um, and and very nice. Come by, take a look. We'll hang a bucket out there for donations if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, Mr. Lang, thank you. Thank sir. you. Everyone, thank you. So uh, next, uh, Mr. Padmaster from the Treasurer's Office. We have a f uh, four items to take care of, sir. First is the Utica Community Schools tax collection request for 2020. <coughs> yes, Mayor and Council, it's that time of year when the other taxing jurisdictions are 
requesting of council uh, a uh, motion to collect their uh, property taxes on, on behalf of them. Uh, so here we have Utica Community Schools requesting the City of Utica to collect the 2020 uh, property taxes on behalf of the school district. Uh, question is uh, also asking whether there will be a per parcel collection charge. Uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, as the local assessing unit, we have the option either of uh, charging a property tax administrative fee of 1% on the tax bill um, to defray part of the cost of assessing in tax collection or uh, charging the various taxing jurisdictions a per parcel charge. So, so the, Phil, is the taxpayer paying that fee or is that fee negated from the, the cost tax, given to the school so, district? So if the property tax administrative <coughs> fee is levied, which the city has done for longer than I have been with the city, um, the taxpayer pays that fee. If you uh, choose to waive that fee and instead negotiate with the various taxing jurisdictions uh, a per parcel collection charge, then in essence what you are doing is uh, ca causing those taxing jurisdictions to have less revenue to uh, operate, less school tax money to operate because they're now having to pay the local taxing and assessing units to do the work that they're doing. Okay, um, understood. How, how much money are we talking about there? If it's a per parcel fee? I've you, never uh, negotiated a per parcel fee oh, so because the PTAF was in place when I started working here. Seems like we have some um, history here. Phil's been here yeah. since the chief was uh, just a patrolman. <laughs> And, so uh, what, is the resident, yeah. what is the, the resident? What is the average resident one fee? Of, a lot of, <laughs> of the ad valorem taxes. So if you have a tax bill of a thousand dollars, you're going to pay one percent PTAF on top of that. Okay. All right. So council it would require a motion to approve the collection of the tax dollars as uh, requested by Mr. Padnoster for the year 2020. So moved. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Secor. It's been supported by Mr. O'Donnell. Ms. Ricketts, I'm sorry. Is there any discussion on the matter? We're, we're already putting out the tax bills and everything for ourselves. Um, good faith effort. I mean, we've always done it, not to say that's the way it has to be done, but in essence, the, the additional cost is so minuscule that to ruin those relationships, I think, aren't worth the bang. And it sounds like it would put more work on the treasurer to have to negotiate these yes. fees and whatnot. So, yeah, no problem. Any further discussion? So it's been moved, it's been supported, it's been discussed. Ms. Riggs, we'll have the roll call vote, please. Sephora. Yes. Renzi? Yes. Cunnington? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Calandrino? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. And Yes. Very good. Mr. Paternoster, item B. Item B has to do with the Van Dyke Curb Reconstruction Project and uh, Progress Estimate 2. Um, <coughs> if you will recall, the Van Dyke Curb Reconstruction uh, contract came in at $103,397. Uh, we budgeted $150,000 uh, for the construction. Uh, progress Estimate number 2 reflects some uh, quantity uh, changes, uh, increases in project quantities um, that would uh, allow us to use more of the uh, grant funds uh, from the state. And uh, since, th since I was only authorized to pay up to the contract amount, I am coming back to council and asking for council's uh, authorization to uh, uh, pay the progress estimates not to exceed the 150000 that we budgeted for um, so that we aren't holding up the project, uh, right. which is coming to fairly close to completion, I believe. So would there be um, any questions for Mr. Paternoster or Mr. Lang reference this? They're both qualified to answer. If not, it would require a motion to um, allocate the funds not to exceed $150,000 of the grant. One question. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. 
do we have still monies remaining? Is this what I'm looking at available? Sixteen thousand dollars. We have sixteen thousand dollars still on the books to spend. Out of that hundred and fifty. Yeah, oh. Phil could answer that better, but there's still some engineering, and there's going to be a final, final uh, bill that comes okay. with that too. The whole the whole goal was to utilize, because of the type of grant funding that it was, very uh, almost identical to Auburn Road. Um, the idea is to use up all of the grant, and we can only use it within the Van Dyke corridor. Okay. So, Mr. Lang, something I noticed um, during the construction process, a lot of debris has been kicked up onto the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Do you think that as part of this we could contract out or use maybe some um, equipment from a neighboring municipality to actually have the sidewalks cleaned from the area that's been constructed? I have it done. Immediately. Uh, in fact, you, if sorry. you go out there right now, it's already, it's already done. done. Well, so from my lips to God's ears, <laughs> to, 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 your, to your workers. That's super service. That's cool. our that's our motto. I would like I would like all things to go like this. If I have an idea, I'd like to say it's already done. <laughs> yeah, super, great, yes, great, we great did. Um, actually, at the at the close of all the brick pavers, um, you know, we did the best we could. There is still some, you know, ancillary issues behind a, a couple spots. The sidewalk would need to be replacing it. You know, not from the project, but uh, yeah, the the entire sidewalk area out to the curb and the curb line has all been cleaned and swept. And Perfect, all so the way to halt. So it's no, looking. Part of even areas that were not necessarily directly by where the repairs were done. Well, this is I think this originated because we've got resident complaints on Van, on Van Dyke sidewalks, and we we've. Been alerting them that we were going to wait until all yeah, the construction all was done. done. Yeah, all all that all that's done. Um, you know, if you want to go down Hahn towards uh, toward towards heading towards Epler, I don't know that that's been cleaned. I mean, it, it can be, but the orders were to clean up the area that you know directly related to all of Van Dyke. So, right. specific to the mayor's question in the area he outlined, yes, that okay. area has been done. Very good. If there are other areas that are to your liking, I mean, <laughs> we can we can address them as as so ordered or desired. Kind of but, <laughs> yes. So, okay, folks, uh, we did have uh, um, the Mendic curb construction reconstruction. I don't believe we did, had a motion on it yet. It would require a motion, um, if I'm not mistaken. To uh, allocate those funds not exceeding one hundred fifty thousand dollars, so the work may continue. So moved. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Secor. It's supported by Mr. Cuttington. Any discussion on the matter? Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Ricketts. Yes. Renzi. Yes. Cuttington. Yes. Sylvester. Yes. Calandrino. Yes. O'Donnell. Yes. Ian. Yes. Very good. Mr. Patton, is there item C? Um, actually, uh, there was a second part to the Van Dyke, oh, and sorry. that is uh, to amend the fiscal year 2020 budget for the engineering line item by $4,527.68 to uh, bring over funds that were left over from last year's uh, to this year's to cover the engineering expenses so we'll on this project. It's been moved by Mr. Sikora. Support. Support. Support by Mr. O'Donnell. Is that right? Is it Mr. O'Donnell? That was, oh, uh, was that? me. What Mr. Was, Sylvester. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Sylvester, sorry about that. Uh, any discussion on the matter? Well, Mr. Yeah. Rick, it's well the roll call vote on item two there. Sikora. Yes. Frenzy? Yes. Cunnington? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Calandrino? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. And Yes, very good. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Patton. Now we're moving on to item C. C. <clears throat> uh, item C uh, is that pertains to the uh, Brownfield grant uh, for the property at 6993 Moscone Drive. Um, the city of Utica was awarded by the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, uh, now EGLE, a Brownfield grant uh, in the amount of $450,000. Uh, for remediation and redevelopment of the property at 6993 Moscone. Um, in turn, the property owner, Circle Land Company, is a subrecipient of that grant. Uh, they expend the funds on the remediation and redevelopment activities and submit to the state for reimbursement. The state deposits the money in our bank account and we in turn have to disperse it to Circle Land. Uh, 
that requires that we <laughs> have a budget for this project. Um, so in talking with our auditors, we determined that we would use the uh, Brownfield Authority uh, accounts in our uh, general ledger. And so I'm asking for two line items to be uh, budgeted for, 243-728-549-000. Uh, uh, which is a revenue account, uh, state, uh, state grant revenue, uh, $450,000. And then an expenditure account, 243-728-967. Dash zero zero zero. Um, that is the uh, expenditure account, also four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And then, for your information, we've received the first installment of the grant proceeds in the amount of two hundred and two thousand thirty-four dollars. And Circle Land Company is uh, eagerly awaiting uh, the disbursement of those funds to them. Um, so I'm asking for a budget amendment for the fiscal year 2020 budget an authorization to disperse the funds as they are approved by the state of Michigan and submitted to us. Are you looking for one or two motions, sir? Uh, one motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the money both in, of money those out. items. It's been moved by Sikora. Support. Support by Mr. Calandrino. Any discussion on the matter? Very good. Ms. Ricketts, the roll call vote, please. Sikora. Yes. Terenzi? Yes. Cuttington? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Calandrino? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Dion. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. And they are making uh, great progress on that building. That's the new sports complex just west of Jimmy John's Field, for those that aren't familiar. And then they're doing a great job of the brick. Uh, the course of brick, I noticed, is up yeah. uh, on the west wall and uh, the south wall. So far, last I saw. They're trucking right along. Mr. Patnaster, item D. Uh, <coughs> item D uh, on the agenda says revenue and expenditure report for the third quarter. You had that in your packet. Um, I won't go over all of the uh, funds. Um, we are one quarter of the way through the fiscal year. And as far as the general fund is concerned, um, we have collected, uh, as of the end of September, we had collected 73% of our um, property taxes as posted to the general ledger. However, as of today, we're actually at 97% mm, right. of our That's real fantastic. property taxes collected, 95% of our personal property taxes collected. Mm, right. um, and I directed the deputy treasurer last week to send out second notices to the personal property uh, taxpayers who had not paid by the due date. Um, since we aren't able to sell those at year end, trying to get them to pay up, and uh, it looks like it's working. So um, I do have one other item that I placed on the table this evening, and that has to do with Pioneer Park. Um, HRC submitted this morning progress estimate number two. Um, and just for your information, I placed it on the table. Uh, as soon as I hear back from uh, the street administrator that the uh, that he has reviewed progress estimate number two, and I'm free to go ahead, I will uh, disperse those funds to um, cross renovations. So, perfect. All right, Andy. That's what I have for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Pennaster. Can you hand this down to Phil? All right, thank you, Mr. Paternoster. Next up we have, um, it's going to be Ms. Ricketts uh, from the clerk's office. Yes, we received a request from the Michigan Municipal League Liability and Property Pool. Um, they have their board of directors election. There's one incumbent director seeking re-election, so we need a motion if you'd like to vote for Jean Stegman, Mayor, City of Minomini. Sounds like Minami? a great place. Minami. 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 <laughs> Sounds she's, like it's up north somewhere. She's had right. eight years of experience. I love Jean. <laughs> yeah, would you like to make See, a motion there? Yeah, I, 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 I move that we support Jean. 
Support. Support. <laughs> it's been moved by Mr. <laughs> Sylvester. It's been supported by Mr. O'Donnell. Any discussion on the matter? It's the only endorsement I need. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Very good. Good luck, Gene. Uh, next up is the uh, computer purchase request. Ms. Ricketts. Mayor and Council, as I stated earlier, Windows 7 is coming to an end. All of our computers in the office has Windows 7. The cost right. is to upgrade is $300 per computer. Our current um, computers besides the building inspector and myself all um, have Windows 7. I feel we're throwing good wit good money away after bad. Those computers are yeah. at least five years old. Um, that's a third of the cost of a new one. So I am requesting to purchase a new laptop for the mayor um, and then a small form factory for the treasurer, the assessor, one for the street department, one for the water and sewer department. Um, we are looking at I-7 computers, which are projected to last seven to ten years of service. We do have to purchase mm. Word because you cannot, or Microsoft Office, you cannot transfer that. And then we also do have to pay for the transfer of all of our data to the new computers. I, I, I just strongly feel, I did talk to Jason about that, about trying upgrading our old computers. He said they're going to run slow. I already have complaints that they run very slow. I think it would be a mistake to spend $300 to upgrade what we currently have. So I am requesting to upgrade six computers and one laptop. Total cost of um, purchase cost $8,930. Installation cost of $1,750. I am going to upgrade one at a cost of $300 which is the counter, which we really only use for rece receding in of money. So that's, um, that doesn't need to be super fast. And we, and we don't do anything on it much besides that. And, and this is a direct uh, from Dell, correct? This is directly from Dell. Um, I did discuss it with Phil. We both, both very strongly do not want to purchase anything but a Dell product. We have never had any problems with Dell. Um, it does also require some budget amendments. I can go through those too. Uh, yes, Beth, I have a question for you. Uh, is there any value in uh, computers after you get all the information? I doubt. Out? I no. doubt it very little. Um, so Sean's we got a web. Sean's got someone that if I take the hard drives out, they'll pick them up and get whatever they can, but there's not much. Well, can we donate them to a school or something? That's, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, well, we'd I still have to take the hard drive out of them. them. I don't know if that's... Can we wipe the hard drives? Hard drives are generally destroyed. I was going to say. Right. Yeah. We have yeah. way yeah. too yeah. much personal yeah. information yeah. on okay. those. And they're only 100 bucks. Get the drills. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was not... You're going to have to... Some were reserve. budgeted. Some were budgeted for and some were not. How old are the current computers? Five years. Five years. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, Mr. Mayor, so older than um, so I work for a tech company. Anytime we get a request uh, for a quote from a uh, government entity, um, we start seeing dollar signs in our eyes. I feel that that is what this quote currently reflects. Um, the laptop that I have in front of me right now is work issued. Like I said, I work for a software company. D D I could. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. I can't hear Mr. O'Donnell. I could easily pull together a, you know, some laptops like this, get you a dual screen monitor, and it would cost you easily half the cost of this. I, I'm, I guess I'm curious what the value add would be here. Um, um, I, I, because I, I, I'm not saying, hey, why didn't you, you know, just buy it off Amazon? But what I'm saying is, hey, I could buy it off Amazon for you. Well... <laughs> We get a quote directly from, um, Dell, from EMC, Dell EMC, yeah. which is specific to government. It's a specific to government. They give you government pricing. Um, I went to also the state, the my deal, um, and from there they have a computer, but it's built to certain specifications which don't fit our needs. This is built for what we need. We can't just say, 
I can't just go out and say, I want that laptop at a cheap, you know, you can get, if you just go out to Best Buy and, and pick one off the shelf, well, yeah, you can get one cheaper. But we had to, um, we had some certain items that had to be complied with, you know, like our gigabytes, and we wanted, we, ori I originally priced um, <coughs> i5s and Jason said if, if I was buying these, I would go to I-7. Yeah. So then I got a price for I-7s, and the difference was like $70. For $70 over a 7 to 10 years. So, I mean, if, if you want me to go back and, and, and price other brands, I mean, I could do that. I mean, I included Jason's original quote, so that would be like going to an outside vendor. It came in at fifteen thousand dollars. I did uh, call Best Buy when Miss Ricketts gave me the specifications that uh, that were recommended for our municipal software, um, and they said they could not beat it, but they would match it. So th their number was significantly higher, but they were not able to uh, give me that number. They just said that the, out of courtesy to the city, they would match, the, uh, but they couldn't give the same exact. Uh, Delivery, nor could they give the exact same. They'd be buying them from Dell, basically, and giving us a discount. So uh, buy them direct through Dell seems like it would be and the I best. I was told the same thing because there. Jason said, "Well, get see what. Let me see what you're going to pay, and I'll beat that price." And he said, "Well, you're buying directly from Dell with their government. I, they're they're not going to do a thing for anybody. You're I mean, getting yeah. the best price out there. When I dealing with the Dell EMC, it's." It's specific to government purchases only. Aside from pricing, um, whenever I hear up, you know, uh, taking an existing system and upgrading, I just hear, you know, security vulnerability. And the other aspect, and I know it's different between individual and government and business, but I can't even imagine working with the same computer for five, for five years. Are you kidding me? Seriously, I just can't even imagine. I mean, unless you want, if you, don't, if you want to be productive, I mean, you. Why not? You, if it works, so, 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 no, 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 because seven, they're, seven it, to it, ten it, years is it, an it, absolute it, fantasy. My concern is we're it's we're just, being told yeah. these computers are only five years old, but then the next, if we do a wholesale replacement, they're going to last seven. That's to another 10. fantasy. That's that, I don't. That you know what? We would be replacing these if Windows Seven was not going to be supported. When I I. I mean, well, I here's an article, a quote from an article in PC Week, published in July of 2015. And this is what the writer says. This may be why analysts are predicting that Windows 10 won't goose PC sales. You can get by with a seven-year-old, and this was in 2015 yeah. they wrote this, a seven-year-old laptop in the new OS. So that would be an 11-year-old computer by... If this article is written today, yeah. right? Um, we, I called my IT manager, who manages hundreds of computers from Cleveland to St. Louis, and I verified that we are also the company I work for is also going to be uh, upgrading to Windows 10. I said, "Are we doing like a wholesale computer replacement?" He said, "No, no way." I said, "What's the oldest computer that we're going to keep in service?" He said, I know for sure we have 10-year-old computers that are going to run Windows 10, no problem. So, I mean, I have an issue. One, it wasn't budgeted for. I also think I'm also in the computer industry. I don't think replacing all workstations wholesale is ever a good policy. Yeah. I think a much better policy is to replace, you know, in our case where we have six or eight workstations, you would replace two and, and do a periodic cycle replacement. Uh, you're you're mitigating your risk at that point. You know if the OS that you're buying is no good, which is often the case. Yeah. Anybody remember Vista? <laughs> and now you have every computer in your facility running Vista, which is not a good practice. If I was doing this, what I would suggest is pick one or two computers, upgrade to Windows 10, see if it works. If it doesn't, then we go back to the drawing board. But I th I think it's wasteful to just do a wholesale replace when we don't even know if these computers will will handle Windows 10. Like I said, I have proof that other other organizations are not just replacing their computers because of a new OS. 
Okay, that's valuable. That's good. That's good input. So, Mr. Kelly Jr., are you thinking that maybe we replace two workstations at this point and then do a three hundred dollar upgrade on those that are remaining so they can be compatible? Because otherwise, we we Does have our to have budget. The, can do we have money yeah, in the much, budget? How much do we, we have, have to, in the budget? Because you would still have to upgrade all OSs Eventually? to Windows Ten. No, yeah, and and when is the when is Windows Ten? When is Windows Seven becoming unsupported? January first, I think. Okay, so we need to act quickly, at least. So if, if I'm hearing you right, upgrade two stations and spend three hundred dollars per each additional machine to bring. Them I would online. say immediately or very quickly, upgrade two stations to Who's, Windows Ten. Who are you going to upgrade? Uh, I think this is a bad idea. So the uh, Beth isn't wrong that a three hundred dollar per machine upgrade is half the cost of what you would do to get a brand new computer. I, I think you a brand new computer six hundred dollars. No way. I think it is simply not true that we are going to be able to maintain these computers at a functional level for five, seven, ten years. I think that is an absolute fantasy. If you have somebody at uh, your place of business running a ten-year-old computer, I feel very bad for them. Um, we there there are computers that are just a couple years old that are just not useful anymore, depending on the updates and the upgrades that they get. Well, our responsibility is, is, is to the taxpayers, one of them. and I think this is a frivolous uh, spend. If we're spending it when not even knowing, we haven't done any tests, we haven't upgraded a single PC to Windows 10, it's a $300 investment to run that test and see what the results are. Pick the oldest computer. My desktop computer at home I purchased in 2014, guess what OS I'm running? To, uh, Windows 10. I have zero problems with it. So, you know... I think we need to be responsible to the taxpayers on this. Sure. At least do one test with one PC, upgrade it to Windows 10. If that doesn't work, then by all means we revisit it. But what's the rush to spend taxpayer dollars? Because this is penny wise and pound foolish. Right. We are spending three hundred dollars, which Instead is of somewhere between blindly spending ten thousand dollars. Well, More isn't it fifteen well, thousand dollars with this the installation? Is ridiculous. I mean, this is never going to happen. I mean, this is. Mr. Riggins, what's the, what's the total cost with with the? Ten ninety. I'm sorry. Um, the one I have in front of me is eighty eight ninety six. Ten ten thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars. Jeff, how much? I, I don't know. Bill, how old? Oh, your how old are your computers? As old as. How much over budget will, if we were to approve this, how much over budget are we? Yeah. She's got the numbers in there. I think it's 47. Is that what it is? I think she's at Archer. We do not need a $1,200 machine. Is this the individual line items? So you're 4480. That's what you'd have to increase your budget by. Here's the question. In, uh, so, in the admin um, plus two I would propose, three, so. Mr. Donald, we, okay, we're in, Oct we're in October. We become unsupported January 1st. If we're not in immediate hurry, maybe we spend the $300, satisfy Mr. Calandrino's curiosities to see if this actually works. We run it for a month. We come back, revisit in the November meeting. We get feedback from Ms. Ricketts to see if it was a meaningful upgrade, if it, if it actually worked. If it does work, then we can look at potentially staying $300 per machine. If it doesn't work, we've lost $300 in investment, and we can then look at upgrading the machines with new purchase. Does that seem reasonable? And that won't well, it, it, it certainly seems like we, it's a good idea to go ahead. I think Beth get, said, get, get, Beth get, get, said get, there was one machine she was only going to upgrade to I Windows was, there 10 there was anyway. There only one I was going to upgrade because it's used so rarely. I, I think we should, we should gather that data. I think that's definitely a wise move. However, we... we I don't want us to have, in the sense of uh, not, we need to be willing to invest within to, uh, you know, your, your basic computer functionings. I mean, to me, it's, it's and again, this is, I'm, this is hyperbole, but the laptops, I see them now, it's kind of like my stapler and my paper clips. I mean, it's about the same, same thing. I mean, I just, just the way I end up having gone through them, okay? And the need to be very, very secret. I guess partially it's because with what I do, the compliance standards are so 
crazy where I'm constantly. But I don't, I don't think anybody's yeah. saying we don't but, do that. But, if, oh, if, right, right, right. But, so, but, but I don't want us to end up in a situation of, oh, just do the update, then it slows down you know, the performance, and then we're complaining about the productivity. How come we're not getting, you know what I'm saying? You end up in that vicious kind of circle as well, too. So I hope we keep a, a broad picture that, yeah, this and up. It, a technological overhaul is going to occur. Yeah, we should probably want to just gather some information, but let's not kid ourselves that. So, Ms. Rickett, so I, I think what, happen. If, if we could, so Council, it seems like we're divided on this, and, there, and, and the other people that are maybe not divided maybe don't know enough about the subject matter. And it's all still saying, in. I still don't know how much it would be over budget. Sense of the scope. 40, so, it's really hard. 4,480 out of the admin right? fun, um, assigned fund balance and $280 out of the... Um, All right, forty-seven hundred dollars. Street. Can we upgrade? Can we upgrade the machine that you said that you would look to upgrade? That, that's the, the. Well, that was for the counter. I guess I. Would we'll, upgrade, we'll, we'll do the th three hundred dollar upgrade on that, perhaps. I would upgrade Nancy's first. Oh, she she's hates her one, computer. She complains the most. She yeah, she complains. Well, is an upgrade going to make it any worse? Or what? Well, we'll we're, 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 we're we're making better. Yeah, okay. Nancy's computer is the same generation as mine and, and Rita's. And and the assessors. Okay. So I think she just has her, more information on there. <coughs> Mr. Ornette, I know you have a lot of information on this, and so do you, Mr. Calendar, and you guys are opposing views. If, if I could, maybe we upgrade uh, the, the deputy clerk's computer with a $300 upgrade. We wait for a month to see what happens, come back in the November meeting, get a report on what if there's been any... Uh, Defects with it. If there's been an increase in performance, and then we can make an educated decision just to, uh, to see if that works as a study. Also, I'm I'm thinking that if we're if if the cost is ten nine eighty and we're forty seven hundred, so that gives us about five or six thousand to work with. Why can't we purchase one or two? You know, do an upgrade and purchase well, one or it's, two. It's, it's not about money that we have available. It's money that are we spending the best. We spending the money best. Right. I think is where Mr. Calandrino's at. Well, eventually we're going to need another one. I think we need to get on an incremental replacement program where, yeah. when Two these computers, computers hit five years, well, I budgeted age. for a couple computers, and, and I don't. I can't remember if you budgeted for a new one. You must have, because you're. We're only. Um, I have, I have office equipment. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you have an we'll, we'll, we'll office equipment line item? Mm -hmm. How much do you have in there? Okay. Uh, we're we're going to break from format just for a second. Sir, you're, you're a Utica resident? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead and take the podium, sir. Maybe Thank your you insight would help. Typically, we I'm don't have... I'm going to ask you to move the public thing up a little bit. Uh, I just recently uh, upgraded uh, computers. Uh, they were actually Windows 10 and Windows 7 at uh, uh, St. John and Paul uh, Catholic Parish in Washington and upgraded uh, uh, computers at St. Karen's. Yeah. Uh, sure. can, had, can I interrupt uh, you just for a second? Can you give us your name and your address, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Paul Kahn's, K-O-N-C-Z. Address is 45814 Hecker, the city of Utica. Thank you, Mr. Kahn. 22 years. All right, so you were saying about the church's upgrade? Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I go along with uh, uh, what she was saying that uh, don't be penny, uh, penny wise and dollar foolish. $300 for an upgrade to a computer. I did upgrades, $700 per computer, $400 more. They were, they were latest generation i5 computers, okay? They had eight gigabyte of memory. Now, people say that, well, my computer runs runs fine on Windows 10. I've had it for eight years. Well, how many how many gigs of memory do you have? Do you have eight or do you have four or do you have two? That that, that changes it a lot. Uh, but I I'll make a recommendation that you go ahead, take your slowest computers first, upgrade them to the Dell. Uh, uh, Dell computer, uh, it's called a new Experian. They're seven hundred dollars. Uh, they have two hundred, uh, five hundred twelve uh, a gigabyte of solid state memory. That is fast. You don't want to mess with any hard drives. Hard drives are on their way out. Uh, and uh, get eight eight gigs of memory. 
256 uh, gigabyte solid state drive and uh, comes with Windows 10 Professional and it's $700. Take your slowest computers, if you've got two, two of them or three of them, change those first. And then you can look at what the big difference is. It's going to be night and day. You're not going to believe it. That sounds like a very rational approach, <coughs> rather than just blindly, let's buy all brand new computers. I mean, now, I that's smart. Do that. I mean, yeah, just at uh, St. John and Paul, uh, we did we did uh, the first four that were so slow. It's like you're sitting there waiting for stuff to come sure. up. Well, we, we do have an urgency with time though, because January first, we're going to be running. We need to at some point get to where we need to go with the upgrade. So you're saying the computers that you are talking about our $700 computer gives us everything we possibly could use to run our systems well and if Ms. Riggins you have the specifications I don't know if you if you recall yeah, what I they don't were. know what I have the hardware requirements for Windows 10 here I would they're much lower than what you're saying Paul but well, I would not, agree I'm sorry yeah. it's for not based on Windows 10 we have requirements that BSNA require for yeah. our you, programs you I was get, getting to that yeah. okay. Microsoft Office Suite requires 8 gig of RAM where Windows 10 only requires 2 gig for a 64-bit system. I would agree with you. I think you said 8 gig minimum. I don't minimum. know whether you're going with, if you're going, the industry is changing, okay, to have less requirements locally. Right, a cloud. Everything's moving to the cloud. That's right. That's right. So, so because of that reason, you don't need as much of a large hard drive. But hard drives, they're going out the window. Right, I'm talking about RAM. RAM. You need, I would say, at least 8, eight, eight gig RAM. No less than 8. Right. Okay? No less I can than even, 8. I can't even imagine. Because I mean, Windows can. can. And that may be can. very, that's something, Beth, you can very easily check on your stations. If they only have, it, you know, and if we went cheap five years ago, and they only have 1 gig of RAM, yeah. then it's a very easy decision. Then well, they probably have a minimum of 2. You know, if they probably have 2, maybe 4, but. The ones that are really running slow probably only have two gigabytes of memory. They probably, I'm going to think they have at least four. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I can go back and research, do more well, research okay, well, and so upgrade if we one get, computer. If we get your information and come back after the meeting, if you get leave of Ms. Ricketts, what we'll do is. Um, I can come and just, I can just volunteer and come uh, in the next couple of days and just look at your slowest computers and tell you what, what's in them. And, and just for record purposes, your, your background in computing is what? 52 years of experience. Uh, I graduated from Reds Electronics School in 1967 in Detroit, went in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force five years. Thank you for service. Uh, super, uh, uh, He's qualified. <laughs> you can stop it. <laughs> you know, worked a couple years. I had a computer maintenance and networking company I, that I ran. For 13 years. Hey, you, seem, you seem very capable. I just want to make sure everyone understands who, who they're having I before them. I need resume. Yep. Uh, just, and I'm looking at a computer that's $1,480. You're talking a $700 computer. I understand BSNA has requirements. Does BNSA requirements equal $780 more on that computer? I don't know what their requirements no. are. I'm, I'm just yeah, saying, without so knowing. I'm, 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 fiscally, I'm saying... I would uh, say they're probably no different than Microsoft Office's requirements. <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> Office is, is known to be a so, hog. And so again, I know with Dell, you can you don't have to buy a package computer. You can order it because I have nothing but Dells, and I know nothing about it, but my wife orders what we need. Okay, then what we'll do at this point, so for the purpose of brevity, we're not going to come to this decision today. What, we, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with council, is uh, postpone this item uh, so that we can do some uh, investigatory work with Ms. Ricketts and, Mr. and Paul, what was his last name? I, Paul Cons. Mr. Cons. I can look at him within the next week. So if, if, if we don't, if no one minds, postpone this. If we'll you do don't our, mind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we want to be responsible okay. for people's money, like Mr. Caldrino says, but at the same time, we, as Mr. O'Donnell saying and Mr. Sylvester, we want to get the best possible product as well without delay. Yeah, we I have, don't want to waste the money, so, though. Okay, if you would leave your contact information with the clerk so that way we can call you as well. Sure. All right. All right, thank you for your thank time you. and your expertise. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next item, Ms. Ricketts, we are left with the uh, uh, sign application fee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, let me get there. Um, yes, under the new sign ordinance, um, we kind of sort of had a problem already. So we put in there temporary signs that exceed the standards, require a permanent approval from city council. Um, 
I would like to, there's costs for that. I have to review it. Jerry has to review it. If it has to come to city council, um, it has to go on the agenda. There's processing fees. I would like to have a $200 application fee for that request. Mr. Riggs, these are temporary signs asking $200? Temporary signs. So that's going to apply to anybody that comes in here for their festivals. Um, Jimmy John's. I mean, he can put his... I don't have a problem if he puts his I want it out on six different times during the year on one application. Otherwise, if you don't, it's going to be $200 for each application. Comment on that. I think that's only fair that the user pay the burden because if not, the city is really paying the cost of all the administrative fees and times for, again, a business entity in most cases to make money off of it. So the taxpayers are paying for their use. So I, I agree with this fee. Okay. If they want to be diligent and get everything they need in one year at one time, fine. But if all of a sudden they blow it, we got to do it all over again. It's another two hundred dollar fee. I like it. Correct. So, um, Council, Ms. Ricketts, I'm assuming is looking for a motion Correct. to approve the uh, administrative fee for the temporary sign application. So moved. Be moved by Mr. Sikora. Support. Support. Supported by Mr. Sylvester. I guess. Is it you said it? <laughs> <It's> me. Okay. <laughs> Supported by Mr. Sylvester. Council, is there any discussion on the matter? Very quickly. So a feather sign would be a non-conforming temporary sign that they would come in here to ask about because it's over the height for temporary sign. So they would have to come in for a per for. We're not advertising that, but I guess the answer is yes. Yes. So if somebody wants to put wow. one sign out, they're going to have to pay a $200 Well, the permit? whole point was not to have all those temporary right. signs. That and that was wording was put in there yeah, right. more to be specific for I'm just festivals. clarifying. If that, is that I, what we're I know. Here? I know. That's why I said well, we then, already had a problem. So. Well, and then in that particular case, right? if I recall the, the language after just 60 days, um, if it's too tall, you actually need a variance, you need an exception, in No, that would be when they would come to us. For just a normal temp sign that's conforming, they don't have to come and get the permit, right? Correct. It's only when they have to come to, come to the city for a... Uh, Some, yeah, something that doesn't conform. Something that doesn't conform. So one feather they, sign I, will be 200 bucks. I don't, I, think, I don't think they, they can be Or if they ask for a series of feather signs. On a or, yeah, if they sign. want 20 yeah. feathers. No, not. Just one or 20. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, same price. But for a normal temporary yeah, sign that conforms, as long as you're within the as it's, free. Said, it's still free. If you're they're within not. the standards. Okay. And once you exceed the standard. Yep. So somebody okay. can just go by and oh, show I the feather sign. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah, it's not for every individual sign. It's once the standards, once the standard has been exceeded. They're smart. <laughs> okay. So okay, council, it's been moved. It's been dis it's been moved. It's been seconded. It's been discussed. Any further discussion? And then Miss Miss Ricketts, will have the roll call vote for it, please. Cora. Yes. Terenzi? Yes. Cunnington? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Calendrino? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Dion? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Ms. Ricketts, anything further? Um, the only thing I had, well, real quickly, Census 2020, I've met with them. I've submitted some new address to them. They are pushing for us to, um, well, partner with them which we will and, and get the word out so just if you talk to anyone yeah make sure you fill out your census 2020 form they are now currently looking for workers you know anybody that wants a job they have an online application um, I will put that link on our website I thought I already did I but I guess not so uh, pushing for census 2020 stand and be counted because the last sentence sen census state of Michigan lost one um, state representative seat. So, and I think the uh, uh, isn't the pay like around nineteen dollars or something like that. Do you mm -hmm. recall the pay for that is like nineteen dollars an hour or something? It's not bad. I, I oh, he said yes. He said nineteen, nine, sixteen or sixteen. It was decent. To thirty dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah it was decent pay. Whatever it was, I they, recall. They do pay. They do pay well. Okay, well, thank you for that update, Ms. Ricketts. That's it. Uh, moving on forward to the Downtown Development Authority, Mr. Calandrino, you want to talk about the ribbon cutting? Yes, we're trying to work out the details for a ribbon cutting for the new mural to happen tentatively on November 1st at 2 p.m. We're still waiting to get confirmation from Chamber of Commerce that that day and time works. Uh, we're also going to uh, incorporate into the ribbon cutting an art crawl. 
We've talked to several of the venues downtown about having the artist who did the mural, Wendy Popko, uh, display some of her fine art pieces, her paintings and sculptural type pieces at the different venues. We've, we're also considering uh, hanging some of her artwork in the lobby here at uh, City Hall, and we're going to call it uh, the Utica Art Crawl in celebration of the new mural. Amazing. So we're very close to finishing that up, but... You know, it's still tentative at this point. Cool. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Calandrino. Uh, Parks and Rec, anything to report, Ms. Ricketts, from the Parks and Rec? November 1st. You're very happy about the recent yeah. funds, I imagine. Uh, the Historic District Commission, nothing to report. Ms. Linda McGraw-Ballou, nothing good? Uh, no report's a good report, or do you have something? So, briefly, you know, we did have some issues, the five-star pawn uh, shop that we discussed in the last couple of months. Um, five-star pawn has sold that business, so that has been completed, and... Um, is no longer at issue. I was just going to give this to the mayor, and then I realized handing him an envelope of cash probably isn't the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this is actually just some additional money that's come in from my uh, father's funeral for the Utica Parks and Recs Commission, an additional $160. So, oh, very good. Thank you. you go. So we'll put that in the Parks and Recs Commission. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. That's very generous of the McGraw family. And I know talking to your mom at the, um, at the uh, homecoming parade. Uh, she said that she was also donating in, so thank you to uh, Kathy McGraw also for helping donate to our uh, Utica Parks and Rec Commission on behalf of your father. Thank you so much. Anything further, Ms. McGraw? Nothing further. There is nothing from the Senior Housing Steering Committee. Uh, Council, you do have before you, uh, the bills have been presented from Mr. Paternoster. It would require a motion to approve to pay the bills. So moved. Support. It's been moved by Mr. Secor, supported by Mr. Cunnington. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion carries. We'll pay the bills. Uh, Mr. Cotton, sir, uh, we have communication from the public. You are our only public here tonight. <laughs> you, you have already accommodated you. All right. Thank All you right. for your expertise and help, and we look forward to working with you so we can save our residents some money and see if we can get the best path uh, towards getting new computers and saving dollars. Uh, Council, if there's nothing further, would require a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. So moved by... Calendrino, supported by Mr. Sylvester. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. We are not.